This lesson looks at graphing and writing various forms of linear equations. Let's recall the slope-intercept form. This was explained previously, but let's just quickly take a look at it again. So this formula is actually really useful when graphing or writing a, an equation of a line if you're given the slope and the y-intercept. So how is this form created? Well, this form was created by taking a line, a general line with slope m, that passes through a y-intercept of 0b, and a random point x, y somewhere on the line. It then uses the slope formula for these two points, takes the y values away from each other, so y minus b as the rise, and x minus 0 as the run. And then basically this equation is solved and it gives you the slope-intercept format, which is the desired line equation format from now on. So let's just see how that plays out. It's over x, multiply both sides by x, and you've got y minus b equals mx. Add b to both sides and you get y equals mx plus b. So this just confirms and reconfirms for you that m is the slope and b represents the y value of the y-intercept. So let's take a look at an example that uses slope-intercept form. Here they want us to write an equation of a line with the slope of negative two-thirds and, and a y-intercept of 0, 4. So we know that the slope-intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Well, let's replace what we know. We know that m is negative two-thirds. Our y and our x need to stay because those are general uh, points that, that create the line. And we also know the y-intercept, so right away we could plug in b as being 4. And so we've got our line equation. Now we can graph it based on this equation. Recall that slope is rise over run and that if your rise is positive, that means up. Negative means down. Run, positive means right. And negative means left. So if you have a negative, place it in one place, not both, and read it that way. So in this case, this is down 2 with a negative 2 on top and right 3 with the positive 3 in the bottom. But we need to attach that somewhere and the only place we can attach it to is the y-intercept that we know. So we know that 0, 4 is an initial point. We know it's there for sure. If we plug in 0 for x, we get 4 for y, so it works. And then we can follow the slope as down 2 over 3. Down 2 over 3. Or up to left 3. Either way, we get this line here. Next up, we've got slope point form, which looks like this. But why does it look like that? Let's first consider how it's built, and then we'll go back and discuss how to use it. So first off, let's consider a random line with a random point xy again, but then a particular point x1, y1 that is specific, and slope m. So we're doing the exact same thing as before, but instead of defining it by the y-intercept, we're defining it by a particular point. And this is very useful when we're given a slope and a point or two points. So if you don't have the y-intercept, this is basically the one that you'll need to use. So let's again use the slope formula and see what happens. So the slope formula would give us 
y minus y1 over x minus x1. Now if you see these and solve these and try to solve it for y, or actually just try to rearrange it, you'll directly get to this. So if we multiply both sides by the denominator, we'll just get the slope point form. So let's just see that happen here. Multiply both sides by the denominator of x minus x1. We're just algebraically rewriting it so that there's no fraction left. We get mx minus x1 equals, and these factors cancelled out. So you can see that algebraically this slope point formula actually is just a reiteration of the slope formula. However, it's extremely useful if you want to write a line equation or graph um, something that's given to you with a slope and a point, hence slope point. So let's take a look at an example here. Write an equation of a line with slope one negative one half that passes through this point. So instead of a y-intercept, we have a point. So let's take our slope point formula and our goal is to fill it out and get it so that it's in y equals mx plus b format because that is the easiest format to graph from. So let's identify our x1 and our y1 in our point and we can fill in our m which was our negative one half and here we had x minus negative four don't forget to put the two negatives, and y minus 3. So the whole goal is to solve this for y and to expand it. So you probably want to expand the bracket first. So you've got negative 1 half times x, and this is a plus. So negative times a positive will give you negative, and 1 half times 4, and I'll just write that here so you see it, 1 half of 4 is actually 2, so that's going to be a 2. And here we had y minus 3 the whole time, but now we want to add 3 to both sides to get y by itself, giving us negative 1 half x, negative 2 plus 3 is plus 1. So in this fashion, we actually see what our y-intercept is, as well as what our slope is, and that allows us to graph it. So this is the line equation answer. And then here, to graph it, we start at 1, and we can travel down 1, right 2, as previously explained. Or up 1, left 2. We could also be asked to find a line equation given two points. But if you have two points, remember that you can find the slope. So in order to do the line equation bit using our point slope formula, as written out right now, we need to first find the slope. So let's do that over here. So we want to take the difference of our y's over the difference of our x's. So we're going to have negative one half minus one-third, and then five minus five-sixths. We need common denominators. So we have negative three-sixths minus two-sixths on top, and then thirty-sixths minus five-sixths on the bottom. So we've got negative five-sixths over 25 sixths, and that's a division, so we multiply by the reciprocal, and simplify, and then we get negative one-fifth. So now, that's our slope, and we can input our slope into our slope point formula. And we can also pick one point. I'm going to choose this point just because it's a little simpler looking because of the 5. So let's try that out. So we have y minus y1. So that's y minus negative 1 half is equal to 
negative one-fifth times x minus positive five. So this here is x plus a half. And then when we multiply the negative one-fifth by x and negative one-fifth by negative five, we get negative one-fifth x plus, and this is one-fifth times five, so that's going to be one. And then we can subtract our half from both sides, giving us y equals negative one-fifth x plus a half. So here's our line equation written in our slope intercept form. And we can also graph this. Now, because our y intercept here is a half, we could start at a half, but we could also find other points. So remember, you could also look for a different point that you think will be easier to start with, if you like. But I think we can start here. Um, we're going to be traveling down one and over five. So we're going to be going down one and over five, or up one and left five. So we can make our line travel between those points. So we finally have the last form and that standard form. And standard form is when your equation is not solved um, in any specific way. Um, except that your x terms and your y terms are all, your variable terms are all on one side and your no numerical terms are on the other. Standard form is actually really useful when you're graphing using x and y intercepts. So remember the x-intercept is found when y is zero and your y-intercept is found when your x is zero. So Let's find the x-intercept first, and that is when we let y be zero. To let y be zero, we have three x minus four times zero equals 12, and so that gives us three x equals 12, and therefore x is four, leaving us with four comma zero as our x-intercept. And our y-intercept can be found similarly, we let x be zero, so three times zero minus four y equals twelve, giving us negative four y equals twelve, giving us y equals negative three. Therefore, zero negative three is the y-intercept. So this method is very similar to finding points using the table, um, except you're finding the specific x and y points. So you can plot those, 4, 0, and 0, negative 3, and graph it, and you're done. So standard form's great for that. We also have a couple special cases, and those special cases have been alluded to in the past, but let's just review them as well. The horizontal line and the vertical line. So how do you get a horizontal line and how do you get a vertical line? Well, a flat line, for example, like this is horizontal. And what do we know about all the points? Well, all the points have y value 2 in this case. So you'll notice that a horizontal line will have y equals something as the equation. So it's good to just know that so that in the future if you're trying to make it into a different format you don't have to say, oh, where's this coming from? You just know that if y equals a value it's going to be a flat line. Similarly, the vertical line is if x is a value. So if x was 2, then you'd have this. So here are a couple examples for special case forms. Say you had write the equation of a line that has an undefined slope and recall that the undefined slope is a vertical line and the horizontal line has a zero slope. So if it has undefined slope that already implies that it's vertical and it passes through the point 2, 3. So if it's vertical, 
you know that it's going to be x equals something because that's the only way you can make a vertical line. And you know that it has to pass through 2, 3. So what's the x value there? Well, it's 2. The x value is 2. So right away, you know that the equation is x equals 2 to give you the following graph. They could also say find the equation of a horizontal line. Right away you know it's a flat line with zero slope. And you also know that it's y equals to something. So because y is 5 in this point that it wants to pass through, then y equals 5 is the line equation. And that looks like this. All those points have y equals 5. Now what about lines that are parallel or perpendicular? So we can recall that parallel lines have the same slope and perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes from the previous video. So if we want to write a line equation that's parallel to a different line, we want to identify its slope first because we can identify what the new slope is going to be based on what we know about parallel and perpendicular lines. So let's first find the slope of the line given and we can do this either by finding points and doing the slope formula or we could just put it into slope intercept form by adding x to both sides we get 2y equals x plus 7 so dividing by everything by 2, you get y equals 1 half x plus 7 halves. This gives us a slope of 1 half. So since the slope of the line given is 1 half and they want a line parallel to it, the parallel line will have the same slope and therefore we know its slope is going to have to be 1 half. We also know that they want us to have it passing through point negative 2, 3. So that's our x and y point that we need to consider. So now that we have a point and a slope, we can use our point slope formula and finish it off. So we've got our x in there and our y in there and then our slope in our slope spot. So let's multiply that out. We get 1 half x and this is a plus 2 so plus half times 2 is 1. Add the 3 to both sides and you get y equals 1 half x plus 4. So now we have a line equation that is parallel to this line but it passes through the specified point. And if it's perpendicular, remember that it's got negative reciprocal slopes. So if this is your line equation and they want you to find a perpendicular line to it, we need to first convert our slope and then do the same as we did before. So again, this slope is going to be, if we add x to both sides, we get 2y equals negative is, um, positive x plus 7. Divide everything by 2 again. This is the same equation, so we get the slope being 1 half, except they want a perpendicular line. So remember, we need to convert it so that it's perpendicular, so the perpendicular slope is going to be the negative reciprocal, so negative 2 over 1, or negative 2, and the point being negative 2, 3. So again, let's go ahead and put our x1, y1 into our point slope formula, which comes from the slope formula, which comes from rise over run, minus negative 2, so solve that, that's a plus, multiply that out, y minus 3 equals negative 2x plus 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, add 3 to both sides and you get y equals negative 2x minus 1 as your final answer.